Hello, my name is Prithvi Sankar and we'll be discussing corneal causes of the red eye. Our objectives include describe how the corneal anatomy is relevant to a cause of a red eye, discover the clinical approach of examining the cornea, and to learn some causes of corneal pathologies. Just a quick review of the anatomy. Remember, the cornea is the outermost clear segment of the eye. It is a structure which is responsible for refracting about 70% of the light rays. It is avascular. However, it does have sensory nerve endings, which are controlled by cranial nerve 5. Pathologies in the superficial cornea may lead to damage of the nerve endings, which can then cause a red eye. This is a pathologic slide of the cornea. Remember, light rays travel in this direction. Light rays first encounter the epithelial layer, followed by Bowman's layer, stroma, decimase membrane, and endothelium. In order to evaluate the superficial layers of the cornea, we use fluorescein. Fluorescein is a vital dye which helps to stain devitalized epithelial cells. This is a video to show you the proper installation of fluorescein. Here we take the fluorescein strip and dab the inferior fornix, making sure not to abrade the cornea or the conjunctiva. We then have the patient blink, and then we use the cobalt blue light in order to visualize the fluorescein. Here we can see that the tear film is stained by the fluorescein. However, there is no corneal pathology seen in this video. So let's present a few cases. Case number one. A 62-year-old patient states that his grandson accidentally poked him in the eye. He has tearing and blurred vision. Here is a picture of our patient. First of all, we see that the eye is red. This is what we call injection. However, we also notice that we see a large area on the superficial area of the cornea which doesn't look regular. If we draw on that, we would see it looking like this. And this would be an example of a corneal abrasion. For another patient, we can also use fluorescein dye. And fluorescein dye is very helpful in order to stain the devitalized epithelium and better highlight the corneal abrasion. Corneal abrasions are one of the most common causes of a red eye. It is a disruption of the epithelial layer. It is very painful because the corneal nerve endings are in this layer. However, it heals very quickly. Treatments may include topical antibiotics, patching, or dilating drops, depending on the nature and the extent of the corneal abrasion. This is another example of corneal pathology. Here we see punctate stainings of the cornea using fluorescein dye. This does not represent a full corneal abrasion, however, may cause pain, blurred vision, and irritation. Causes of these punctate stainings include ocular surface disease, other forms of dry eye, exposures to toxins or other elements, and contact lens wearing. We will talk about that later. For our second case, this is a 40-year-old who presents with a current red eye with tearing and blurred vision. Treatment has occurred before with eye drops in the past. Here we can see photographs of this pathology. On the left, we can see that there is fluorescein uptake However, this does not look like the corneal abrasion we had seen before. In this case, there is a linear branching pattern that happens. On the right, we can see that there is swelling of the cornea. This is represented by the arrow. The cornea is normally clear. However, when it becomes swollen, it becomes more translucent or whitish in appearance. This is an example of herpes simplex virus keratitis. 
It is one of the most common causes of corneal blindness and the most common cause of infectious corneal blindness. It may present with linear branching patterns with terminal bulbs on the superficial cornea. Topical or oral antivirals may be used to treat this condition. However, it may have recurrences. We can also see these branching patterns in other conditions, and this is a notable example. This is an example of herpes zoster virus, which has affected the cornea. This has a similar branching pattern as we've seen before with herpes simplex. However, these patients will normally also present with a rash in the V1 distribution. Both herpes simplex and herpes zoster virus may cause a red eye. For our final case, this is a 20-year-old contact lens wearer who complains of pain and a red eye. The vision is blurry, and occasionally this person sleeps with their contact lenses. Here we can see punctate staining again. This punctate staining is centrally located and may be caused by overwear of the contact lenses. Contact lenses poses a specific risk for the cornea because oxygen cannot come onto, into contact with the epithelium since there is a barrier now due to the contact lens. Organisms such as bacteria may thrive in this condition. Contact lens related corneal pathologies are common. Contact lenses may cause a keratitis or an inflammation of the cornea. Etiologies may include viral, bacterial, chemical, amoebic, or parasitic. We recommend discontinuing contact lenses immediately and treating with the appropriate topical antibiotics. We also recommend that patients with contact lenses never sleep with them. Here is another example of a contact lens related problem. We can see this whitish area on the cornea represents a corneal ulcer. This is an infectious cause often caused by bacteria, particularly Pseudomonas. This has also caused an inflammation in the anterior chamber. When inflammation in the anterior chamber becomes very severe, it can cause a hypopion as we see here. This needs immediate treatment. So just a recap of corneal causes of a red eye. I hope this lecture has been helpful for you to evaluate the conjunctiva and the cornea more in-depthly. Also remember to use fluorescein drops in order to stain the superficial cornea in order to detect things like corneal abrasions or punctate stainings in the cornea. Remember to pay particular attention to the pattern of cornea pathology. And I hope this lecture has made you aware of different treatment options for com some common conditions. Thank you.